Uh, hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So today is the day, guys, not yesterday. I know a lot of you guys were putting in ledger please in the comments section in yesterday's video. No, we're gonna do it today. Today is the day. So this is the video. This is the video where in the comments section you are going to put ledger please. Okay, and then you're going to put some contact information like perhaps your uh, your Twitter handle. There we go, working money, CH, or any kind of way for me to contact you, whether it's an email. And so this video is going to be posted and then I'm going to be doing the draw tomorrow. So Saturday, April the 6th is when I'm going to be doing the draw, guys. Not this afternoon's video, but April the 6th tomorrow, Saturday, April the 6th. Again, stay tuned. Come back here tomorrow morning to see if you've won a Ledger Nano. I'm going to be doing two draws tomorrow. But again, I just want to reiterate, it is this video where you're going to be putting in Ledger Please in the comments section along with some contact information. So hopefully that is uh, a lot clearer today. Guys, we have seen a bit of a roller coaster ride for Bitcoin. Right now, we're seeing a Bitcoin price trading in around 67,000 per coin. Earlier this week, we were seeing Bitcoin trading in around 64,000. It did go up as high as 69,300. Was not able to break that level up there. And now we're returning downward. So, um, I mean, positively looking at this, we are still making higher highs. So technically higher, uh, sorry, higher lows here. But are we going to be making higher highs? I mean, we still haven't been able to break over 71,700. This level right in here, just didn't cut it. We got up as high as 69,003, and now we're back down to 67,000. Of course, the crypto market is still kind of indecisive at the moment, although uh, we are up a little higher today. Greed is now at 75. The market cap is at $2.49 trillion, and 24-hour uh, volume has actually increased by a little bit here, 9.94%. We've seen Bitcoin in the last 24 hours up 1.06%. Ethereum's down 2.09. BNB coin down 1.63. Solana took a big hit, 7.4%. XRP up a little bit, 0.21%. XRP did also see a bit of an uptick yesterday, reaching an interday high of about 61.5 cents, just over 61.5 cents, but now has come right back down uh, as Bitcoin did retrace back down to those lows. So now XRP is trading at about 57.577 cents. And for good reason, guys, I think... It was this news here. Ripple is now launching their own stable coin. So my Twitter feed has been full of information. And, uh, you know, a lot of people want to know more about this Ripple stable coin. How is it going to affect the market? But more importantly, what does it mean for XRP? So Ripple did come out with this statement. The stable coin market is booming around $150 billion today and projected to soar past $2.8 trillion by 2028. So, of course, Ripple's done their research. Uh, there's clear demand for trust, stability, and utility. That's why later this year we are launching a stablecoin pegged one-to-one -to, -one to the U.S. dollar on the XRP ledger and on Ethereum. So that is uh, a very important uh, piece to this puzzle, the fact that it is going to be compatible with the XRP ledger and the Ethereum blockchain. This move extends Ripple's reach into both institutional and DeFi realms, diversifying use cases and enhancing our payment infrastructure to bring the worlds of traditional and decentralized finance closer together. Ripple's stablecoin, whoops, uh, back over here, Ripple's stablecoin will be 100% backed by U.S. dollar deposits, U.S. government bonds, and cash equivalents, and Ripple pledges transparency with monthly third-party attestations, ensuring trust and reliability. So Ripple uh, maintaining their, uh, you know, their transparent ideology, or rather the ideology of being transparent in the crypto world. Very, very good uh, look on them. Uh, so stablecoin serve as a pivotal entry point for DeFi and introducing a trusted enterprise-grade stablecoin to the XRP ledger will generate more use cases, liquidity, and opportunities for developers and users alike. A very important point here that I'm going to be getting to later on today. Uh, simultaneously, we know the future of crypto is multi-chain. Launching this stablecoin on both the XRP ledger and Ethereum opens doors to cross-chain interoperability. Ripple's move into stablecoins isn't just about innovation. It's about contributing to the XRPL ecosystem and setting the stage for a more robust and diverse crypto landscape. And so even CNBC has picked up on this crypto news, this one courtesy of Bank XRP. Okay, let's talk about the top stories. Ripple is jumping into the $150 billion US stablecoin market. The issuer behind the XRP token announced plans to launch a stablecoin backed by US dollar deposits, bonds, and other cash equivalents. Now, Ripple is entering a field dominated by Tether and Circle. Last year, payments giant PayPal also entered the space with its own dollar-backed stablecoin. So what they're suggesting here is the market's already, well, 
got their big players, Tether, USDC, and PayPal, also now in the fold. So what does this mean for Ripple stablecoin? Funny subjective views here posting this. It only took us eight months to figure out the answer to the question from Brad Garlinghouse's panel interview at the Token 2049 Singapore event. Remember this? Something that you can answer more clearly, since you do have uh, some investment in CBDCs, but when are you going to move into stable coins? Yes. <laughs> when? Yes. <laughs> Look, I, I think the stable coin market is fascinating. Uh, you know, Ripple, at, the, at our core, we are a payments infrastructure company. We use stable coins today. We use XRP when it's appropriate. We use stable coins when it's appropriate. We're solving customer problems. Uh, will we do or say more than that? Not today. <laughs> what a ham. Brad Garling is with the perfect answer every single time. Wanted to thank Subjective Views for posting that. So first XRP haters claimed Libra was going to kill XRP. Now they say Ripple has created a stable coin to kill XRP itself. A coin they hold more than 45 billion plus of. So they've created a stable coin, something they won't profit much from, to kill the thing they profit from the most. This coming from Niche Bucks because there has been a lot of criticism now regarding XRP and the stablecoin. Can they coexist together? Archer here uh, posting this. So uh, apparently there was also a Coinbase article, guys. It paints a rather bleak picture of Ripple and XRP, suggesting Ripple is scrambling for relevance with its new stablecoin venture. But let's dive into some claims and add some much needed context here. So I'm glad uh, Archer here came out, read the article, and gives his point of view. Ripple has struggled to win the real enterprise customers. This is a quote from the article. While the article emphasizes Ripple's supposed struggles, it's essential to remember that Ripple has formed partnerships with over 300 financial institutions globally. This includes big names like Santander, American Express, don't exactly scream struggle to me. Dwindling usefulness of XRP, says the narrative. Uh, this suggests XRP's relevance is fading fast. However, XRP remains a top cryptocurrency by market cap and is utilized in international transactions and liquidity management by several financial entities. Its use case in RippleNet's on-demand liquidity service highlights its ongoing utility, not its demise. Number three, stablecoin as a desperation move. So this is all how uh, Coinbase has been painting this story. Despite the launch of a stablecoin as a last ditch effort seems unfair, many major crypto projects are exploring or have launched stablecoins as part of their ecosystem expansion. It's not a sign of failure, but adaptation and growth in a fast evolving crypto space. P.S. Is PayPal desperate as well? So that's something I think we should make note of. And also brings us to, uh, you know, this idea that the U.S. is still, uh, you know, looking to regulate stablecoins, probably going to be their first step into regulating uh, uh, fully regulating a type of cryptocurrency. I think they're looking at stable coins first and then, you know, trying to sort out where the rest of the crypto market falls in place. Legal troubles with the SEC. Yes, Ripple is in a legal tangle with the SEC, but it's far from the only crypto company to face regulatory scrutiny. Moreover, the outcome of this legal battle could set a precedent for the industry indicating Ripple's pivotal role in shaping the future of crypto regulation. Then there's partnership fallouts mentioning uh, fall through partnerships without context seems damning, yet in a rapidly changing world of fintech and crypto, shifts in partnerships are common as companies pivot and markets evolve. Plus, many partnerships are exploratory and not all expected to last forever. So that is, uh, you know, something else that we should uh, definitely observe. The MoneyGram partnership is uh, one example that comes to mind there. Ripple's financial services are rarely used. So these are all claims, by the way, from Coinbase, from that, uh, sorry, not Coinbase, from that Coindesk article. The claim that Ripple services are not widely used needs a closer look. Uh, RippleNet and its on-demand liquidity service have been adopted by numerous financial institutions for faster, more cost-effective cross-border payments. This contradicts the narrative of underutilization. So this article might want you to think Ripple is in trouble, but if you really look at what's happening here, Ripple is more like navigating a complex maze than teetering on the edge. Sure, there are challenges, but which innovator doesn't face them? Ripple's still pushing forward, finding new paths and opportunities. It's not about whether they're stumbling. It's about how they're moving ahead. Uh, what worries me a lot is that Coinbase's, uh, Coindesk's, sorry, I said it again, saliency over Ripple, especially when Ripple has been fighting for the entire crypto industry for three years. They are fighting for what Coindesk makes money on. I wonder if we will ever see the end of this stupid tribalism and realize that we on the blockchain are all fighting together against the old legacy systems that are so reluctant to run anything. So some great insight here from Archer's point of view. I did highlight one of his tweets in yesterday's video, which uh, if you guys didn't catch, I will link it up here in the top right-hand corner. And so as to be expected, Brad Garlinghouse 
has come out and slammed the Coindesk article. This one, courtesy of Michael Branch, uh, U. Today did pick up this article. Garlinghouse argues that the negative article is embarrassing for the industry. Childish antics masquerading under what should be a credible brand that leads coverage of the crypto industry. Garlinghouse added in his ex post. In the article, Daniel Kuhn, a deputy managing editor at Consensus Magazine, writes that Ripple declared the death of the controversial XRP token with its recent stablecoin announcement. Uh, Kuhn has suggested that the embattled company might be desperate for a new revenue source. And again, guys, I will uh, link the Coinbase article here if you do want to read the FUD. Uh, I'm not going to go over it for you guys, but I felt like it was only fair to put it in the description of the video if you guys want to read what Coinbase's opinion is now on XRP, or at least Ripple's move towards this uh, towards this new stablecoin. Well, Brad Garlinghouse did come out. He said, to put it mildly, it is embarrassing for Coindesk. It's embarrassing for the industry. But as Archer points out here, these are the kinds of people, a deputy editor holding the whole industry back. Childish antics masquerading under what should be a credible brand that leads coverage of the crypto industry. Maccababy down here saying, I don't see why we still pretend crypto journalists are anything other than C students that require Velcro shoes. Archer here saying, this is why I personally have very different ways to acquire the latest information than reading articles on Coindesk or anywhere else. If you do it, it's extremely selective. And this is why, uh, you know, I did uh, coincidentally highlight this yesterday. There was an article that came out that suggested that Binance was uh, halting XRP transactions. And so you really have to make sure you are getting, you know, your information from a credible source. Uh, at the same time, you know, Coindesk does come out with good articles, but then, you know, there are some opinion pieces that tend to teeter more on the side of FUD. This article could uh, could really harm the Ripple business model of dumping on retail, says it scoops XRP. It is unlikely to harm, says Archer here, in my opinion. Such FUD stories do not live long. Why? Because there's no real ground for this story, just an extra reputation hit for Coindesk or FUD desk, as we uh, as we like to call them back in 2018, 2019. Doesn't look like much has changed there. So wanted to thank uh, everybody included in this thread. Brad Garlinghouse, Artur, uh, of course, Maccababy, it scoops XRP. Everybody involved and, uh, you know, the people also who I uh, forgot to thank. Michael Branch, uh, Artur again, Niche Bucks, subjective views, everybody there. Sometimes I uh, I just power through these things and uh, forget to thank everybody. But I want to thank you guys for posting all the articles you do. XRP Drops here, giving us some more insight on this new stablecoin. Okay, so Ripple stablecoin on the XRP ledger along with the Ethereum blockchain. So again, XRPL and the Ethereum blockchain. This is an important point. So 100% backed by US dollar deposits, short-term US government treasuries and other cash equivalents. So we know... Now this dollar is going to be, well, completely transparent, obviously, going to be looking at the fundamentals, I think, quarterly, uh, uh, Ripple did say. The company said the token, which plans to release later this year, will be 100% backed by US dollar deposits, as I mentioned, XRP Ledger, along with Ethereum blockchain, to start out. So it could expand onto other blockchains and will be based on Ethereum's ERC-20 token standard. David Schwartz said the new stablecoin could also help breathe some life into the XRP Ledger's decentralized finance ecosystem, which has a decentralized exchange, but relatively low usage relative to other chains. And uh, here's a quote, guys, we're going to have public on it's on a monthly basis, so not even quarterly, monthly basis, hopefully by a top tier accounting firm. Uh, and we'll disclose more on that later, said Schwartz. The Ripple CTO said this token will be aimed primarily at enterprise customers and banking institutions and organizations. So again, Ripple maintaining that theme, leveraging this stablecoin for institutional use cases. So how do you guys feel? Mixed reviews? I know a lot of people in the XRP community have been uh, talking about this. Like I said earlier in this video, my feed was full of uh, XRP or sorry, Ripple stablecoin news. And I mean, yeah, people are having mixed feelings about this. Crypto Insight UK posting this. I want to get this out here to clarify some thoughts. You guys know on this page, I've covered XRP for years, but I'm not a maximalist. I always say what I think. With that in mind, I think the Ripple stablecoin will be massively bullish for XRP and the XRPL as a whole. And here's what he thinks about that, okay? Promoting interoperability. I think Joel Katz recently talked about auto bridging between Ethereum and the XRP ledger. Remember when David Schwartz talked about that? Well, we need more interoperability between the XRPL and other chains in order to drive more demand ultimately for the native token, which is XRP, creating the opportunity to have retail and institutional grade DeFi natively on the XRPL, increasing use cases for XRP and attracting builders, Guys, that is massively bullish. Finally, giving us an off-ramp within the network if we want to trade with size into stable coins and then back again. Anyone who thinks this isn't bullish is blinded by emotion and lack of number go up instantly slash over the last years. 
this is the sort of thing that will help numbers go up, but people are still complaining. So, you know, you read the surface level material, the FUD that Coinbase puts out, and, uh, you know, these are the emotions people are feeling. Interestingly, the stablecoin will be backed by dollars and U.S. treasuries. This will be good for recognition of the company with the U.S. government. Tether are one of the biggest treasury holders in the world. That's one of the reasons I feel they're still around. If Ripple does the same, that relationship with U.S. government could be crucial going forward. This could also mean that we could earn yield on said stablecoin, not only via liquidity provision, but also maybe via staking. Hmm, interesting thought there. There would be a native yield with treasuries. Just my two cents or my two drops anyway. So uh, just commenting on this. Well stated, mate, says Agrag Crypto. It's a game changer in every single aspect. Uh, Crypto Insight UK saying, I feel like I must be missing something here because there isn't an underlying feeling of positivity. And I mean, you know, this is again why I think we have to be careful what we read. We have to understand what these uh, what these news outlets are trying to promote. Again, like I said, back in the day, Coindesk was dubbed FUDDesk, always went after XRP. Then the lawsuit happened. There was FUD, 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 you know, when the lawsuit was occurring. But Ripple stood up. They fought against the, you know, they fought against the SEC to defend the crypto market. And then, you know, the sentiment changed. Oh, look, look at Ripple, the saviors. Look, they're trying to help. Boy, is this market two-faced or what? So uh, anyway, wanted to thank uh, Crypto Insight UK just for posting that. Some more information here from Crippen Writer, okay? Also commenting on this question, is XRP doomed? Let's learn together to fully understand the bigger picture. So what he states here, Ripple News, Stablecoin Basics, Key Differences of XRP Facts and Figures, the XRPL, AMMs, and the Summary. Ripple has announced the plan to launch an enterprise-grade compliant multi-chain compatible 100-backed USD stablecoin. So guys, this is going to be different than any other stablecoin. This is the real deal. Stablecoin with lots of regulation, lots of provisions, ensuring that it is the uh, regulatory benchmark, the gold standard, so to speak. In contrast to all other stablecoin alternatives, the goal is to be transparent and credible through monthly asset attestations, as well as to commit to a compliance first mindset. So Ripple has stated all this. A stablecoin is on a uh, is a digital on-chain representation of an asset that exists outside the chain. The main goal of the issuer is to serve as a bridge between both worlds, assuring a stable exchange rate while vowing to stay reliable, lawful, and solvent. Uh, then down here. On the XRP ledger, there is a best practice for issuing a stablecoin. It involves configuring and creating purpose-built accounts. So, uh, mints the stablecoin, trusted operator management, day-to-day -day businesses and trading. Uh, on Ethereum, stablecoins are issued uh, are simply issued via ERC uh, ERC twenty smart contracts. Excuse me. Unlike the XRPL, where stablecoin issuance is native to the blockchain and safe, Ethereum calls for smart contract audits prior to launch. So, giving us some of those key uh, differences between those two different chains, stablecoins can never be neutral since they have dependency towards the issuer, an institution, or a certain jurisdiction. XRP, though, on the other hand, is a global neutral digital asset. So these are the two fundamental differences between the stablecoin and XRP. And XRP is uh, tied to the decentralized XRPL. Every stablecoin has an issuer which raises concerns about reserve backings. And I guess that's why, obviously, Ripple wants to be completely compliant and transparent. What if the counterparty is no longer credible and the coin depegs? XRP is and will continue to be the sole counterparty free asset on the XRP ledger. So just some more differences there. Audits and attestations are the only way we can check and trust the issuers off chain reserve assets, but are they genuinely trustworthy? Whereas XRP allows anyone to look at the most current ledger on the XRPL and learn more about the supply. There are multiple separate USD stables offered by various issuers on various chains and different AMMs, but the XRPL always has a single native currency and native DEX. XRP may bridge them on chain via a method known as auto bridging. Uh, stable coins are bound by contracts defined by the issuer and can be created or burnt without total off chain visibility because XRP is not a stable coin and has no need for backing. All new currency creation is up to consensus. So now some key differences. We're entering schizo territory. So follow at your own risk. In contrast to XRP, every USD backed stable coin is only as valuable and strong as its off chain representation. In a world of mistrust, do you have faith? in fiat. So now we're getting a little philosophical here. Stablecoin total market cap, just showing us some uh, some information and some graphs here regarding, uh, you know, stablecoins in general. Uh, chain dominance, and I will link this in the description of the video if you guys want to follow further. Facts and figures, stablecoin and Uniswap, uh, the Mazari total volume trends here. 
Uh, global stablecoin market is massive with USDT leading the pack and Ethereum being the most popular chain to issue such a stablecoin. In terms of AMMs, stablecoins account for billions of dollars in daily volume. Because XRP is counterparty free, a Ripple US backed stablecoin to XRP AMM pair is likely to soon get to the top of the ranking. So think about that for a second, guys. You can utilize the stablecoin to boost XRP adoption if it is that standard, but also counterparty free. It's going to be in Ripple's best interest to now promote their stablecoin. And, uh, you know, coming into this regulatory clarity, Ripple can see the roadmap. So they can now suggest use our stablecoin. Maybe USDC will even take a back seat in terms of regulatory status being second choice to the banks and financial institutions who are already all partnered with Ripple. So these are all things that are making me go, hmm, because with more stablecoin adoption, we know stablecoins are the most popular option out there. That would, in fact, drive more XRP adoption secondarily. And uh, there you guys go, more XRP demand coming secondarily from the primary use case of the stablecoin. So a lot of great insight here from Crippen Writer on Twitter. Again, I will link this in the description of the video for you guys. I think we're going to see this gain some popularity. Some people are rightly asking as Ripple is launching a stablecoin on the XRPL one-to-one -one with US, what is the point then of XRP? This coming from Kieran Kelly. A concern of some is also, wouldn't a bank prefer to use a stablecoin versus a volatile crypto? Another question being raised, how does a stablecoin built on the XRPL benefit XRP? Well, we went over some of that. A good number of people in the XRP community would like to know how a stablecoin would benefit them. So we are getting some theories now of how this stablecoin could in fact benefit XRP. The XRPL here is a giant DEX or a decentralized exchange coming from niche bucks. Until recently, devs and Ripple have not focused too much on this built-in technology with AMM and auto bridging. There is more and more opportunity to create lots of trading between assets on the XRP ledger. When you make markets, you can earn money this way. Ideally, there will be lots and lots more assets on the XRPL to trade between. XRP is a native choice to bridging between these assets. And so I guess the rest would be history. Again, driving more demand now through this stablecoin because we know these institutions are going to use the stablecoin. Using XRP was such an abstract idea for a lot of these companies. But now if they can see it, if they can see it straight ahead of them and Ripple has come out with that stablecoin, well, this could in fact drive more demand to XRP. So this is the first step, guys, to more utilization for the XRP token. And what do you think is next considering Brad took eight months to spill the beans? Not going yeah. away. Are we going to see a, a Ripple ETF, do you think? An XRP ETF, you mean? XRP ETF, sorry. I can't answer that one either, though. <laughs> <laughs> worth a try. Worth a try. Worth a try. Thank you so much. I'm guessing ETFs are next, but that's just my opinion. Please subscribe to the channel, guys. This is your last day. Your last chance, actually, to put Ledger, please, with your contact information, preferably a Twitter handle, in the comments section of this video. Guys, remember, it's this video. This is the video you have to do it in. I'm going to be doing the draw tomorrow, Saturday, April the 6th. So tune in tomorrow if you want to see if you're a winner. But in today's video, in this video, Put down in the comments section, Ledger, please, with your contact information. And subscribe now, guys. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.